Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth webinar in our new Open Classroom Civil Designer Software webinar series. My name is Charles Scott and I'll shortly be joined by my colleague Andrew Cole. Every Friday webinar is dedicated to Civil Designer's Water Module and Andrew will shortly be listing the topics he will be covering today. During the presentation, please ask us any questions you may have via the text messenger service, which either Chris or I will answer. So without further delay, Andrew, who many of you in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Southern Cape, and Namibia will know well, please take it away. Good day. In today's webinar, we'll be setting up a water project, then defining a few pipe routes, and also having a look at the auto placement of air and scow valves. Okay, to start with, I'm just going to check that I have a water design file. So you can see there in the project settings the WDF file, that's our water design file. And then before I set up the actual water model, I want to check the pipe defaults. So under settings, pipe defaults. Okay, you can set your material type, your nominal diameter. In this case, I'd like to use 90 millimeters UPVC. Okay. All right, so there are a couple of ways of setting up your water model. Um, one of them would be to import um, the whole setup from a drawing that you've done of the whole water layout, the whole model's layout. The alternative is to graphically draw them in. So you can draw in your pipes, uh, various methods to draw in the pipes. The one that I'm going to look at today is to draw in your pipes parallel to lines. This function will automatically um, offset your new pipes um, at a specific distance or through existing node or through any CAD point. In this case, I'm going to use the distance at one meter to offset at one meter from existing CAD lines. And then also using the trim function to trim the lines. You've also got a tolerance that you can set for your alignment points. Okay, so just to show you how this works, I'm just clicking on the side, obviously, that I want to position the new water pipes. And then whenever you want to end a pipe or insert a node, you just right click and then end pipe. And then just carry on, just remember to always click on the correct side that you want the pipe positioned of that existing CAD line. And right click to end pipe. You can see it's pretty quick and easy to, to draw in your network. Previously, you would need to put in some construction lines and then draw along the construction lines and trim your pipe uh, manually. But this does everything automatically. Okay, and then I'm just going to add in another pipe or two for that same draw parallel function in this crossing road. And I'm just going to need to right click and pipe, right click quit. But to re invoke, remember you can always use your space bar just to re invoke the last used function. Okay, so I put one in that servitude as well. Okay, then I want to show you the trim function so you can trim your pipes to tie neatly to these existing um, pipes. So graphical trim pipe and You've got an option to trim both pipes or trim the one to intersect with the other and just split the other pipe. So I'll just show you the first method where you're trimming both sides. So you select the one and you can see it trims that pipe right back. So you're losing a portion of your pipe. So I'll just undo that um, and then I'll select to trim. So just undoing. I mean, I run this graphical trim pipe now. Um, trim pipes, and then on the second pipe, my second click, I'm selecting to trim and to split. And split. Trim and or split. Okay, so it'll actually then split the pipe and insert a node at the connection. Okay, so I'm just going to use that same pipe trim function just to tidy up these other connections. I might need to just delete 
one of those nodes over there. Okay, so those are all neatly trimmed back. Okay, and then just to show you if you need to insert a node on existing pipe, you use split pipe and it'll actually split the pipe and insert a node. And then if you want to remove a node on an existing, you would use the join pipes function, graphical join pipes. So those two nodes are very close together. I'm just going to remove one of them. Okay, so next up, I actually want to use the import from drawing function, creating a model from an existing CAD layout. So I'm going to use the selection filter, the setting selection filter. I'm going to select my pipes um, with a specific diameter, which I then append in those 90 millimeter pipes, and then all my nodes, any property for the nodes. Select now to select everything and then just right click delete selection. So all those pipes and nodes that I've drawn in are now removed from the database. Okay, now I'm just switching on the visibility of my water pipes CAD layer. And then just to show you, these are just CAD lines or could be normal poly lines as well to represent the bends in your pipes. The CAD lines or poly lines that can be used. So I'm going to run this file, import, convert drawing entities to create my water model. You can see there's a built in search, so it's picked up the separate CAD layers um, that you need to, to read in your, your water model out of a CAD drawing. And in this case, we had 26 pipes. The nodes are inserted at the ends of the pipes, and then you've got the one reservoir, which would normally join in as a circle on a, a separate layer. We can just have a look at the data summary of the whole network. You'll see the 26 pipes and the one reservoir. Demands have also been picked up from a separate CAD layer with demands written on them. Okay, so I just wanted to read that in so we can have a look at the pipe routes functionality. Okay, so under graphical, you've got define pipe route, uh, which allows you to select um, a start node and your end node. And then you can, if there's multiple variations to that route, you can select uh, a different um, route, just like with your GPS. So routing point or via point. Okay, and then you can accept, right click accept and then give your route a name. I'm just going to use the route one and then I'll define another one at the bottom here. I'm going to start at the bottom right node and then I'll just move around to the left over here just to show you. Once again, select the start and the end node, and then I won't put in any via points. I'm just accepting, and I'll call that route number two. Okay, so right click quit. Okay, one of the big advantages of using the pipe routes is being able to display your route changes. Um, those can be activated. Um, or switched on and off in the display settings. So display settings, um, you've got a separate pipe routes um, page that you can go and set your change interval, for example. I'll just make it, it's defaulted to 10, I'll make it every 20 meters. You can have the changes displaying um, when the route is active, as in being used in the vertical alignment or when you set it up as being the active in your pipe route settings you can also set your alignment points visible if you right click there's a couple of options there your pi label your changes um, so you can set a specific offset for those pi labels for example so those are fully customizable okay so just to show you um, how that current uh, or active will be set on the pipe routes. If I go to tools, vertical alignment, you can see over there at the top right, um, 
you can select which route you want to work on. So if I make route one, the active route uh, in my vertical alignment, for example, then that would then change the activeness of that route um, in the actual model. Okay, and then another place that you can set your routes visibility or activeness is under the settings, pipe route settings. So all your defined pipe routes would be displayed in this dialog. I can select route 2, for example, and then click on the show button. And then it'll zoom into that area. You've also got some auto label settings. In this dialog, you could set your uh, labeling for your alignment points, your pipes, and your nodes. You've got options to display the routes, the PI numbers, the vertical horizontal angles. And then for the pipes, the root number or the pipe number. If you right click, it gives you those various go fetch options in the curly brackets. And then for the nodes, similarly, the root or the node number or a combination of the two. Okay, next up, I want to move on to the automatic placement of your air and scale valves functionality in Civil Designer. So I'm just opening up my vertical alignment again. And we need to use the toolbar to run this automatic placement function. But firstly, let's have a look at the air valve sizing. So you've got your permissible pressure during air intake and then during exhaust. Uh, exhaust. You've got your overall maximum velocity that you can set, your maximum flow rate as well that you can set. And then you've got a selection of a two-stage, your small and large orifice um, valve, or a three-stage. Okay, and then your ratio of large orifice to nominal diameter, and then minimum nominal diameter setting. Okay. And then to actually run the function, you have to go to this toolbar on the left of the vertical alignment. So this automatically arrange your air and scale valves. Okay, this dialog has got a warning that every time you run this function, then it'll replace the existing air and scale valves on that portion of the network. Okay, the air valve placement would be where required, and then placed on slopes with a change greater than 1% as the default. And then the maximum distance between your air valves is set to 500. Um, that sizing criteria would take us back to that previous dialog. And then your scar valve nominal size is set to the default of 80, which would be the red book value. So if I click OK now and run the function, then you'll see those air valves and scar valves have been positioned according to the design criteria. There are icons in the toolbar to allow you to add and remove your air and scale valves manually. Okay, so I'm going to remove one air valve manually. And then the alternative would be to remove some of your alignment points, those high points. So we've got insert, delete individual alignment points, but we've got this bulk delete alignment points. So you can smooth out a section of the pipe. Um, and from this point to that point, I'll run this smoothing. Okay, then we just have to re run the placement of the and scar valves. So just rerun the function and you'll see that that air valve has been removed in that smooth section. Okay, so I'm just going to save and close the vertical alignment. And then let's go switch on those air and scale valves. The display settings, you need to check the box to show them. As you can see, we've got the text boxes for the air and scale valves. But I just want to go back to the display settings. Um, you can see you can set your symbol pen and size and then you've got a text box here, your ID, your type, a short type or your diameter size of your and scale valves. Okay, what I'm noticing is there's an overlap between my pipe root chain each text. So there is a function to graphically adjust your air valve symbols and text position. So you select it and there is a default button to rotate through 180. OK, 
Okay, so that sorted out the overlapping text. Okay, and then to end of today, I want to do a water long section plot. So plot generate using our standard water long section sheet file. Okay, and the benefit of the water routes would be now that you can also select which route, which of your defined routes you'd like to plot. We've got a, a section here for your air and sky valves that you'd like to display on the long section plot. Once again, you have those IDs, the types and the diameter that you can insert as text. Okay, so it's your standard water long section detail that you would get. And then on the actual long section, you'd see your text for your air and your scar valves. And that's all I've got time for today. Until next time, back to you, Charles. Thank you, Andrew. That was fantastic. We did struggle a little bit with your microphone. Hopefully we can sort that out next week. And that brings to a close the first week of the new Open Classroom Civil Designer Software webinar series. Thank you to all who attended today. Uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, see you next week, Tuesday at 2 o'clock for the Survey and Terrain webinar. Thank you very much. Take care and goodbye.